Yes, indeed, it is true. Bernie Sanders has five radical ideals for you. Yes, indeed, America. And you know what? Americans overall strongly support them. Ideal number one from our good friend Bernie. Bernie Sanders, that is. Health care for all. Sanders is... Sanders is a critical, you know, is critical of the Affordable Care Act, arguing that it didn't go far enough and saying that we need Medicare for all single payer health care system. Now, this ideal is very popular among Democrats. Democrats are all about it. 80% of Democrats in the last Progressive Change Institute poll supported it. And 7 in 10 Democrats and leaning Democrats responded that they agree to the statement that it is the responsibility of government in Washington to see that the people have help paying for their doctor and their hospital bills. Number two thing that Bernie and you and most of us agree on, taxing the rich. Sanders called for a massive transfer of wealth from middle class, from the middle class to the top 1% of earners. He says, and rightfully so, that you know, the top 10% of earners, which this is the facts, there's a big problem in this country when the top 25 hedge fund managers makes more money than all the kindergarten teachers combined in the United States. True fact. And Bernie says, hey, listen, these folks should pay their fair share in taxes. And 64% of Americans say that they are bothered a lot by feeling that some corporations aren't paying what they would argue is their fair share in taxes. The third thing, free college tuition. Yes, indeed, America, it is true. Sanders is opposing the free college for all tax, or the free college for all act, rather, a plan to provide free college education to public colleges, to public colleges funded by small, a small tax on Wall Street transfers. 60, hear this, 63% of respondents support a similar proposal that President Obama made earlier this year, including 47% of Republicans. Next thing is campaign finance reform. Sanders is running to forcefully, is, is running forcefully against money in politics and his campaign has shunned super PAC support. He's fun, um, funded by undisclosed billionaires. According to polls, most Americans are in sync with Sanders on this issue. They think, hey, listen, millionaires and billionaires should not be able to fund our elections without being known. And lastly, same-sex marriage. I already released a piece on Huffington Post um, not too long ago. 50% of Americans agree, um, and 46% of Republicans, a, most, a majority of Republicans under 45 say, listen, marriage is, marriage can be between a man and a woman, a man and a man, a girl and a girl. If you're a problem with gay marriage, don't have one. And so does Bernie. Moving on. Moving on. America. This week in Chicago, this past weekend in Chicago, we have had what is, people are calling one of the most gruesome weeks of violence. When the city had eight killings in two days, including the death of a seven-year-old boy, something is seriously wrong, America. And Chicago's police chief says, we have a broken system. Police chief um, Gary Mc McCarthy told reporters on Sunday, Criminals don't feel the repercussions of the justice system. And I would go a step further and argue that the reason why now conservatives say, oh, but Chicago's a gun-free city. So the problem is we need more people with guns, which is counterintuitive, right? So Chicago has a lot of people with guns who have the guns illegally. So what the conservatives are arguing is if you give Chicago more people with guns legally, you'll stop people with guns illegally from shooting people. That doesn't make much sense to me. What makes sense to me is making sure we get all these illegal guns off the streets. Now, uh, now I guess everybody's asking, now Richard, how would you do that? Well, one, get rid of straw purchasing, right? So you cannot, my producer can't own a gun and sell me a gun, that would be illegal, which is what straw purchasing is. Where a, le a person who legally has a gun can sell a person uh, illegally a gun. Second thing is this gun show loophole, where gun dealers, can go to a gun show in Arizona or, you know, a couple states over from Illinois, buy enough guns to blow up the Taliban, and then sell them via straw purchasing or in the black market, right? If we did that and we had background checks for gun shows and we banned straw purchasing and we banned high-capacity magazines, we'd make steps in the right direction as a nation for decreasing the amount 
of guns we have in the system. Now, here's the problem. Even if Chicago was a gun-free city and it was a gun-free utopia, if outside that utopia, everybody can get a gun and everybody can sell a gun, then you're not living in a gun-free city, right? It's like saying, we live in a car-free city here in whatever city, so we don't have pollution. But in the city next door to us, they have all the cars in the world and they're polluting like hell. Is that pollution not gonna come over to our part of the city? Of course it is. Of course it is. That's the problem with these gun rights folks. And that's why America, it's really important that we call them out every single time. We call them out. People like Dylan Ruth shouldn't be able to have a gun and go up and go in and shooting, shooting a church. Now, this idea of having an armed guard at a church is going to stop Dylan Ruth from shooting a church makes no sense because at Sandy Hook in Newtown, there was a gun. There was a guard and the guard had a gun. And thus, it didn't matter. Young people still lost their lives. But I'm moving on, America. I'm moving on.